If you've tried budgeting again and again and it just doesn't seem to be working for you, it's not your fault. Most budgets are overly complicated and almost impossible to keep track of. So I am going to teach you the only budgeting formula you will ever need. By the end of this video, you'll have all the information that you need to put together a simple budget that you can actually stick to. So if you are ready to make this your last budgeting plan, keep watching. And if you want more free education on how to save, invest, and make the most of your money, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get a notification when we release a new video. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Laurieann. I'm a financial coach and co-founder of Dow Jeans. And we hear from women all the time who know that setting a budget is important, but they just can't find a method that works for them. Today, I'm gonna teach you the balanced money model. And we've used this model to help thousands of women be able to develop a plan for their money that allows them to create the life that they want. Before we dig into that, let's just talk about why budgeting is so important. I want you to imagine for a moment, two women who have both set the goal to eat healthier and lose weight. They both get invited to a party that is where, of course, it's at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, one of these women, she makes a plan. She's gonna fill up her plate with slow-release carbs and clean protein and allow herself one dessert and stay away from all fried foods. The other woman decides she'll just wing it. Who do you think is gonna be more successful in their goal and navigating the buffet? Well, of course, the woman who has a plan. And that is why budgeting works. It's the plan in the all-you-can-eat buffet of life that we live in, where marketers are coming at you from every single direction, trying to get the money that's in your pocket. So budgeting works because it helps you think in advance about the best use of your money so that you're making decisions about how to use your money when you're in the right frame of mind instead of when you're in line at the checkout counter. But people struggle to start a budget because honestly, it's really easy to overcomplicate it. And I did this a lot of times. I created too many categories. I couldn't figure out what amount to set in the different categories and I would get discouraged right there. In fact, if you've ever given up on a budget before, leave a comment down below and let me know why. Was it too complicated, too restrictive, too boring, too much work? What I'm teaching today, the balanced money model, is a simple and easy to implement formula. And this approach doesn't require complex calculations or number crunching. In fact, there are free online calculators that are gonna figure out the percentages for you, and I'll link to one in the description. So here is what the balanced money formula is and how to set it up. This is the called the 50, 30, 20 method. And creating a budget that's easy to stick to, it boils down to a simple formula. The 50, 30, 20 model divides your after-tax income into three buckets. So 50% of your income is going to go towards needs. These are things that you cannot live without, like food and housing. 30% of your income is going to go to wants. These are things that make life a little more enjoyable, like brunch with friends or a new book. And 20% is going to go towards savings, putting money away for your future. Now, when you first take a look at your finances, you may find that you are nowhere near these percentages. That's okay. All we can ever do is start where we are and work towards a new goal. All right, let's dig into each of the categories. The first category are your needs. Now your needs are ideally no more than 50% of your after tax income. And needs are your must haves. Okay, these are things that you cannot live without, bills you must pay regularly. This is what you need to have in order to stay alive. So food, water, in order to stay healthy, any medication you need, in order to stay in a job, transportation, internet, and what you need to stay in a home your rent or your mortgage, your utilities. Like I said, ideally you want this to be no more than 50% of your income. So if you do the math and you find that your needs are costing you more than 50%, then it becomes really difficult to sustainably save money. And you may need to either reevaluate your cost of living or look for ways that you can increase your income so that you can support your current living situation. If you find that you're spending more than 50% on needs, narrow in on some of your 
biggest expenses and figure out ways that you can reduce them. The less your needs cost, the more money you have to put towards savings or to spend on your wants. A few years ago, my family, we made a big move from living in San Francisco where the cost of living was really high to relocating to another state where the cost of living worked a lot better for our budget. Now, obviously, picking up and moving to a new state isn't the right option for everyone, but don't be scared to think outside of the box to find ways that you can save on your needs. Could you trade your car in for something more affordable or get a better rate on your insurance? Can you make more of your meals at home? Next up, let's talk about your wants. Your wants are ideally about 30% of your after-tax income. And your wants, this is your fun money. This includes things like going out to the movies or a restaurant, buying a new outfit. It's just spending money on things that you want. And spending money on things that you want it is important. The purpose of life isn't to simply save as much money as possible, it's to enjoy your life. We just need to do it sustainably. We need to make sure that us enjoying our life today doesn't limit our ability to enjoy life in the future because we've accidentally overspent and created debt or financial insecurity. So if you are finding that your wants are taking up more than 30% of your income, try to find cheaper alternatives to things that you enjoy buying or doing. For example, instead of going out with the gals, maybe offer to host a game night at home. Or instead of buying a new summer wardrobe, check out the thrift shops first. Comment down below this video with some ideas that you have for replacing your wants with less expensive alternatives, and let's all help each other figure out some ways that we can save. All right, next up, the third and final category is your savings. Ideally, you're able to put 20% of your after-tax income towards savings. And this is money that is strategically put aside to take care of future you. This is so you can build a better future for yourself and your family. It's really easy to forget to think long-term when putting together a budget. But the goal isn't to just survive the month. It's also to make life easier for future you by building wealth and long-term financial security. So if this part of your budget is below 20%, look to reduce your spending on your needs and wants. And if it's already over 20%, awesome job, keep that up and make sure you watch our videos on how to invest your savings. You don't just wanna leave that money sitting there in cash, we want it growing for you. Some special instructions for anyone who is currently carrying credit card debt. You will want to put this portion of your budget, the money from this portion, towards paying off that debt rather than simply building up your savings. This is because the interest rate on credit cards is so high that it doesn't really make financial sense to have money sitting in savings while also paying high interest rates on credit card debt. So we recommend building up a small emergency fund. For most people, $1,000 is enough so that if anything unexpected happens to you, you don't have to go back into debt for, to pay for it and then use the rest of the savings portion of your budget to pay down your debt. So to recap, the balanced money model is a super easy way to start budgeting. Aim to spend 50% of your income on needs, 30% on wants, and put 20% into savings. You can get started by taking your income and multiplying it by these percentages so that you know what your target is for each category. And then simply start writing down everything you spend money on and which of the three categories it falls into. At the end of each week, add up the amounts of what you've spent and see where you are against your target. Then use that information to help you make spending decisions every single week. It's important to remember that wealth, it doesn't happen overnight. In fact, it's built by the small actions and decisions that you make every single day. And the 50-30-20 method is a great way to meet your financial goals easily and quickly so that you can stress less and spend more time on money and things that are the most important to you. If you're ready to take the next step in securing your financial future, click the link in the description below to check out our free webinar on how to think like an investor. And I will see you there.